Hello, I'm Charles Gwen, and I'm a Certified Aging in Place Specialist. Today I'm going to share with you a quick and simple explanation of a reverse mortgage. Reverse mortgages are presented positively by old actors on TV, but they also have created some headlines, mostly negative. It's important for homeowners, especially those who are considering aging in their own home, or have parents who are, to know more about this growing financial option. And here's why. Studies show that as the bulge in the homeowner population enters their 60s and beyond, they have little or no savings, and a large number still have mortgages on their homes. More and more of this group are continuing to work to pay the bills. But even for these folks, there will be a time when they have to stop working. Social Security alone is not enough. Many people are going to need more money to have a comfortable lifestyle, and some just to survive. Qualifying for a traditional mortgage is almost impossible, and even if it were easy to get, monthly payments just make the homeowner's situation worse. One way for them to meet this need is to sell their home and rent until their money runs out. If they live long enough, they will eventually be homeless and in the care of a Medi-Cal or Medicaid paid nursing home. But there is an alternative for homeowners who are 62 years or older. It's a reverse mortgage. Making sure people have a home for the rest of their life is exactly what the home equity conversion mortgage was designed to do and the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage is the official name of the loan we commonly call a reverse mortgage. The idea behind a reverse mortgage is relatively simple. Figure out how much money you can give a homeowner today so that when you add the interest to it each month, the loan is not larger than the projected value of the property when the homeowner may pass. The designers of the program let the home alone stand for the collateral. So there's no recourse for homeowners or their heirs if a downturn in the home values causes the home to be financially underwater. Then to make sure that lenders would invest in these loans, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, put FHA insurance in place, which ensures the lender in case of a downturn. That same FHA insurance also works for homeowners. It guarantees that homeowners will get all of their money even if the bank becomes insolvent. The amount you can receive from a reverse mortgage is determined by applying government provided factors to the appraised value of the home at the time the loan is made. These factors increase according to your age. Currently, at age 62, you would receive 52% of the home value, and at age 90 or older, 75%. Since the housing market crash a few years back, lenders will only invest in reverse mortgages that are FHA insured. The FHA can't just insure any amount, so they limit the amount a homeowner can receive to a percent of the home's value or to a percent of $625,500, whichever is less. For example, a 62-year-old with a home value of $1 million would receive 52% of $625,500, not 52% of the $1 million home value. The next thing to know about a reverse mortgage is that it is simply a mortgage. It has a note and a trust deed just like a traditional mortgage that you now have or you may have had on your home in the past. The title to the property stays in your name and the bank does not own your home. You may sell and move or refinance at any time without any prepayment penalty. The difference between a reverse mortgage and a traditional loan is that there are no required monthly loan payments. Instead of you paying the loan interest, it's merely added to the loan balance each month and the loan increases slightly. 
Notice that I said no required monthly loan payments. Of course, the largest majority of people don't make any payments for their entire life. However, you may make payments of any size or amount into a reverse mortgage at any time. There are reasons that this can be an advantage and part of a financial plan or estate plan. For more details on this, see my website, charlesquinn.com. The loan has only one payment, and that is when the loan comes due. A reverse mortgage comes due when the home is no longer your primary residence. For many, this is due to their death, but there could be other reasons, like selling or moving. Also, with a reverse mortgage, the loan could come due for non-payment of taxes, insurance, homeowner's dues if applicable, or not keeping the home in livable condition. These are things required by all loans and would be needed even if you didn't have a loan. It's important that you make plans to have money available for the continued payment of these responsibilities. Since it is so vitally important that you continue paying the taxes and insurance, the Department of Housing and Urban Development, or HUD, has enacted a credit check and financial assessment procedure to demonstrate that you are able and willing to pay the ongoing property charges, including the taxes and insurance. For the few who are unable to make this demonstration, an amount may be withheld from their loan proceeds for the future payments. This is called a full or partial life set-aside. For more details, go to my website, charlesgwynn.com, or contact me. Reverse mortgages are for homeowners who are living in their property and therefore are limited to single-family residences, two, three, or four-unit homes, and HUD-approved condominiums. Also, manufactured homes that meet the FHA requirements are eligible. There are no restrictions on what you can do with the money you get from a reverse mortgage. However, you have a choice of how to receive it. Basically, the choices are most or all at one time, monthly payments for life or a definite number of years, leaving your money in a line of credit for use later, or a combination of these. For example, if you are paying off an existing mortgage so you will not have a monthly payment, you may use all the money at the beginning of your loan. But if you are getting the reverse mortgage so that you will have access to cash later in case you need it for in-home care or home modifications, you would leave it in the line of credit. This way, you will have not borrowed it and would not accrue interest on it until you actually drew it out to use it. For more details on this, see my video on how to use a line of credit option or visit my website at charlesgwen.com. The home equity conversion mortgage can have a variable or fixed interest rate. There are reasons for choosing one over the other, depending on the circumstances, but I'm not going to go into those right now. Please visit my website at charlesgwen.com or see my video about reverse mortgage interest rates for more details and an explanation of how variable interest rates work. Now let's take a look at the costs involved with getting a reverse mortgage. The first thing to know about the costs is that normally the homeowner doesn't pay them out of their pocket. They're simply added to the beginning of the loan because a reverse mortgage is made to help people by putting money into their bank, not taking it out. With that said, there are reports that these are expensive loans. Well, there are costs involved, of course just as there are with any loan. Escrow fee, title insurance, filing fees, appraisal costs, sometimes an origination fee, and other normal fees as with any loan. As I mentioned earlier, the reverse mortgage is insured by the FHA to entice investors to make the loans. That insurance is paid for by the borrower, so that is an additional amount added into the loan. It varies greatly according to the way you need to use your money at the beginning of the loan. 
If you use less than 60% of the amount you qualify for, the insurance is one half of 1% of your home value or one half of 1% 1 of 625,500, whichever is less. So for example, if your home is valued at 500,000, your FHA mortgage insurance premium would be $2,500. If you needed to use more than 60% of the money you qualify for, the FHA believes that the loan is more risky and the insurance is increased to two and one half percent or five times higher. So for that same $500,000 home, the FHA insurance premium would be $12,500. This seems high to most people, but there are other factors to consider. The real cost of any loan is calculated by considering all of the costs plus all of the interest payments for the entire term of the loan, and then dividing that by the number of years of the loan. This is called the annual percentage rate, or APR, and it's used to compare loans. Lenders don't make loans for free. The cost for a loan is always paid for by the borrower in some way. Sometimes people get fooled by no-cost loans just to find out that they actually paid more over the long run. Comparing the APR is government mandated. It's to help consumers choose a loan with the best terms. So here's the real story. A reverse mortgage is an expensive loan if two circumstances happen together. First, if you need to use more than 60% of your money up front. And second, if you only have the loan for a short time, like two or three years. Because the costs for the loan are added to the loan in the beginning, having the loan for a short time is not a wise use of the loan. However, if you use the loan the way it was intended, for half of your remaining lifetime or more, this, in effect, spreads the costs over time and the APR is comparable to most traditional mortgages or banks' line of credit. Even with using all of your money up front at first, it's not really more expensive. If you want to know more about this, you can see a comparison of traditional loan APR and reverse mortgage APR at my website, charlesgwen.com. And finally, the question that I am often asked is what happens when I die and I have a reverse mortgage? The first thing I always say to my California homeowners is, I hope you had a living trust to avoid the probate process. But in any case, your home will pass to your heirs. And of course, the loan is attached to it. At that point, your heirs have choices. First, let's consider the normal circumstance where the home value is more than the loan balance. Your heirs will have up to one year with HUD approval to satisfy the loan. This is to make sure that they're not forced to make a quick sale and lose some of the equity. Some heirs choose to sell the property and keep the cash from the sale. Others choose to pay off the reverse mortgage from the savings or from refinancing and live in the home. It's completely up to them on how they handle their inheritance. There have been times when the real estate market falls and home values decrease. This may cause the value of the home to become less than the balance of the reverse mortgage when the homeowner passes. In this situation, the first thing to know is that your heirs will never be responsible for any shortfall. The loan has a HUD-mandated non-recourse clause that means the house alone stands for the debt. Second, if they wish to keep the property, HUD has made rules that allow the heirs to keep the property at less than the market value. The heirs may satisfy the loan by paying the lesser of the mortgage balance or 95% of the 
of the current appraised value of the property. The FHA insurance pays the lender the difference. It's important for your heirs to know their rights when the time comes. That's why I recommend your loan officer meet with your children or other heirs and provide a full explanation. There's a lot more to know about a reverse mortgage before you would get one. One way to learn about them in detail is to visit my website at charlesquinn.com. Also, you may see more of my videos that provide simple, easy to understand answers to other questions such as, are reverse mortgages really more expensive loans? How does a reverse mortgage variable interest rate work? And how does a reverse mortgage affect income tax, Medicare payments, Medi-Cal, Medicaid, or VA benefits? To get the latest videos, you may want to subscribe to my channel. The Home Equity Conversion Mortgage was designed to help people with certain financial needs and goals. Correctly applied, it can help you have a place to live for the rest of your life. But if used the wrong way, it can be devastating. So I would like to leave you with one thought. Don't get financial products like investments, insurance, and mortgage loans on the internet or over the phone from an 800 number phone salesman. Make sure you know the qualified professional you're dealing with, where they're located, how to contact them after the loan closes, and know that they are dedicated to doing what's in your best interest. And that should include telling you not to get a reverse mortgage if it's not the right thing for you. I hope this information has been helpful to you. For more information on this topic or anything to do with aging in place, Social Security maximization planning, or reverse mortgages, please visit my website at charlesgwynn.com. Thanks for watching. Thank you.